In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praises are due to Allah. We praise Allah and we thank Him. We seek Allah's support and we seek His guidance. We ask Allah for His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own selves and from our sinful actions. Whoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whoever decides to go astray, no one can guide back to the straight path except Allah. I testify that there is no God except Allah, and none is worthy of worship except Allah, without any partners. And that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final messenger, and, it, and he is his servant. May Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, upon his family, and upon his, his companions, and upon those who follow his guidance until the day of judgment. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, chapter 30, verses 70 and 71, He says, O believers, be mindful of Allah and speak in the right fashion. And for a good purpose, Allah will correct your deeds for you and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved a great success. We will continue to talk about the Qur'an and the multiple aspects of the Qur'an that lead us as Muslims to have full conviction that what we are reciting and reading and living by is the guidance from our Creator. Before we go into the next point in this talk, we discussed two points in the last, in the last talk. Number one was the fact that this Qur'an, despite being at the highest level of eloquence and that it is a literary miracle, still the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not claim it for himself. He disowned this being his own work. And that is something that's unusual. You can go back to that talk for more details. Actually, writers normally tend to steal from other writers and attribute things to themselves. Here the exact opposite is happening, where the Prophet Muhammad is given something that is beyond the ability of the Arabic poets and literary masters, and he claims that it is not his work. He's not taking any credit for himself. Number two, the second point that we talked about last time was the fact that the Qur'an's revelation to the Prophet Muhammad did not come according to his own will or his own need. It was dictated by a different source and by a different planner. When he needed the most to absolve his own wife and to clear his own reputation and his household's reputation from what is being leveled against them, against his wife, you can go back to that talk for more details, he still did not receive any help from Allah to clear him, to clear his wife from the accusations that were leveled against her in that community to the extent that the community became divided and almost went into an internal struggle or strife or fighting because of this incident and still the Quran did not come down to the Prophet Muhammad for 30 days until the stress was extreme upon him and his wife and his wife's family and the whole community, that is, when, that is when her innocence was declared. If it was up to him, he would have silenced all these accusations from day one and not, let, not allowed for this matter to spread to this extent. Also, we see another phenomenon about the Qur'an is that the Qur'an frequently comes with teachings and advice and directions that are contrary to what the Prophet himself would have preferred or chosen. Or it would command him to do things that he was himself disinclined to do, something that was heavy on him, he did not want to do. But the Quran would order him to do something like that. I will give you examples. Whenever one of us makes a certain mistake, we always try to hide it and not show it to the people. The Qur'an, we know, is a book that will be recited by 
all of humanity, all, all over the globe at least, not all of humanity, but all over the globe, till the end of times. It is very unusual, actually unimaginable, that if the Prophet does something which is considered a mistake in the sight of Allah, that he would actually expose himself in the Quran and scold his own self and criticize his own self with a recitation that will be, that he, will he, he himself will hear it. Because he, the companions will be reciting these verses while he's hearing them one day and all Muslims will be reciting them till the end of times. The example I want to give right now is when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was trying to call certain leaders of the tribe of Quraysh to Islam and one of the Muslims came to him asking him to teach him or asking him in a certain religious matter and he was so occupied at the time with teaching these elders and leaders so and he was hoping that if the leaders and elders embrace Islam then the whole tribe can follow them and that's how it went in Arabia people followed their leaders that's how it is mostly today as well so when this Muslim came to him and he was a blind man so the, the man didn't see the situation otherwise he wouldn't have done that Prophet Sallallahu Prophet peace be upon him was talking to a bunch of leaders of Quraysh and this man came and intruded and started asking him, can you teach me some of what God has teach, ta taught you which is something that can be delayed and deferred to some other time right but he wasn't uh, excuse me brothers please I can't focus please guys I can't focus so <clears throat> it could have been the first to some other time but since the man himself was blind he didn't realize the situation so he went and intruded and started asking him questions in this kind of setting so what happened is the prophet was so embarrassed he didn't know what to do he couldn't tell him maybe to go away right now or something like this at the same time he was so occupied with calling these people so he didn't give him the attention that he needed and it is something that could be understandable but still revelation comes down in chapter 80 the whole chapter actually talks about this thing and the title of the chapter is abasa which means in arabic he frowned because of the situation he was in prophet peace be upon him was not happy with all these questions given or directed to him while he's so busy calling these elders and leaders of the, that tribe so he felt uncomfortable and he frowned which is a natural human reaction but still the chapter comes down and it criticizes the prophet muhammad in a very actually harsh way let me show you how first of all the title itself saying that he frowned and the title and the chapter itself as the verses as we will read indicate that the mind the man was blind so he's a man with some kind of disability who requires more care you follow so it's the, the chapter reads as follows he the prophet frowned and turned away that's that's verse number one verse number two because there came to him a blind man this man's name you know him abdullah his name was uh, abdullah because there came to him a blind man while he was preaching to to some other people but the chapter the, the verse only says that because there came to him a blind man it doesn't really mention the whole setting because the whole setting was known and then it says but what could tell you that perchance he might become pure or he might be guided which means that how do you know that this man would not benefit more than these people because we are supposed to direct our teachings to where it will provide the, the most fruit so Allah is telling him how do you know that these people are more important than this man this man will benefit more than these people you do not know that he wanted to purify himself and come closer to Allah Azzawajal. you don't know his intentions which means this man really had good intentions so how can you turn away from him and occupy yourself with people who are not interested 
in this matter at all. Or that he may receive admonition, this man who came asking. As for him who thinks himself self-sufficient, talking about these elders and leaders who are arrogant and who are turning away from the teaching anyhow, he says, as to those who are turning away from you, you attend to them, you give them all your attention. So this is criticism. How can you turn away from somebody who is eager and keen to learn and give your attention to somebody who doesn't care, couldn't care less about what you are telling them? And then it says, and then it, it repeats actually, it says, this man was coming to you running. Yes, I means that. He was in so much of a hurry and, eager, and he showed so much eagerness to learn and you still did not pay attention to him. And that it also says that he has the fear of Allah and has the God consciousness in his heart, this man. While those who are neglectful and proud and arrogant, you direct your attention. فَأَنْتَ عَنْهُ تَلَهَا The word says talaha. You know, talaha comes from lahu in Arabic. Lahu means to do something that's useless. So as if Allah is saying to him that you're occupying yourself with something that is useless while you had all the benefit in teaching this man. And then the, the verses keep going on and on on this matter. Prophet Muhammad did not need to put this, if, if, if it was his own creation or his own product, he wouldn't talk about himself in such a way and have Muslims recite this in front of him and for generations to come till the end of time. It doesn't make any sense. It is the creator who is teaching him on the etiquettes of calling people and whom you should direct your most attention to, to those people who are eager and keen to learn, to those people who need your help. While those people who are turning away from you in arrogance, you, are not, you will not be questioned about them. They, are, they have chosen their way and they will bear the consequences of their choices. Another example is an internal affair with his family. And again, nobody likes to, to have his internal family affairs to be exposed to the community. None of us. You have a, any kind of problem with your wife or, or anything that happens inside your house, you don't go about making announcements after this happens to the public. You don't do that. Nobody does that. Correct? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as you know, he had more than one wife. And one of them used to offer him some certain form of honey. So some of his other wives, two of them specifically, I think it was Aisha and Hafsa, their names were, they, were, they got a bit jealous because he loved this kind of food. So they, they did not wish that he eat this food in her house. So they agreed upon it, uh, with each other and conspired with each other that if he comes to your house, tell him that your mouth does not smell very good. What have you eaten? <laughs> and, and you do the same. When he comes to you, you say the same thing. You, you know, your breath doesn't smell very good. What have you eaten? So, and he would say, no, I just, ate, uh, I just ate some honey or drank some honey at the other house. So they say, no, no, it, it smells awful. Don't do this again. So they did that. Even the prophet... They did that off, uh, obviously repeatedly. So he told them, he said, okay, no, I will not eat this honey again. He, uh, he actually believed, <laughs> believed what they were saying. So, so in chapter 66 of the Quran, God criticizes the prophet. How could you forbid something that I made lawful to you, to yourself? How could you do that? And it talks about this whole conflict. And it calls upon these two wives they actually were shocked when he came to know about this conspiracy. The, the verses indicate that very clearly. Men and ba'akahada. Who told you this? Nobody knew except me and her. الخبير, he said to her, the, the most knowing, the one who is acquainted with all your actions, the most knowledgeable is the one who has told me of this, of what happened. And the verses call them to repent. And the verses criticize the Prophet himself. Why would you actually prohibit this lawful item of food that I've provided for you just to please, uh, to, please, uh, to please your wives? And they were actually lying. It wasn't true. 
It didn't smell. Honey doesn't normally smell at all. We know that. So it says in chapter 66, verse 1, O prophet, why do you impose on yourself a prohibition of something that God has made lawful to you only to please your wives? And it goes on and on, multiple verses on this, on this matter. Inshallah, we'll continue in the second part of the khutbah, God willing. <clears throat> In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. We praise Allah and we thank Him with, and we seek His help and support and His forgiveness. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, O believers, be mindful of Allah and do not die except in a state of submission to Him. That's in chapter 2. We send our praises and salutations to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as well, and his family and his household and his companions and his followers. No one in his right mind would think about exposing such a, an internal family affair to the public and have people recite this in front of him throughout his life and till the day of judgment. It just doesn't make any sense to think about it this way. You have to look at it. This only shows that he is being directed and taught by a higher power, telling him what to do and when to do it. And if he does something wrong, it tells him you did wrong, correct yourself. And this, we will continue to see examples of this. Another incident, is when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he had an adopted son. His name was Zaid. So, Zaid wanted to get married. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went and, went and chose, helped him choose a wife. And that wife happened to be the cousin of the Prophet himself. Her name was Zainab. Um, and she was not happy, like she wasn't very you know, happy about this marriage. She wasn't inclined to marry this, this man who was Zaid. She still had some kind of feelings that he was inferior to her because she was from that tribe of Quraysh and he was from another tribe. He was actually kidnapped as a child from a, an unknown tribe and sold at one point as a slave. And then Prophet Muhammad um, uh, freed him and adopted him. He made him and he raised him as his son. So uh, at one point he was a slave and he was from another tribe. She, she looked at he was, that he was inferior to her. But Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, you know, told her that, you know, this marriage would please me and uh, uh, I, I recommend that, I recommend Zaid for you. So she accepted, reluctantly, but she accepted for the sake of the advice of the Prophet Muhammad himself. But because she had this internal feeling in, in her, the marriage did not go well. And there was always, you know, conflicts between them and they were always going back to him. She's his cousin, the cousin of the Prophet and um, he's the one who advised her. And Zaid is his adopted son. So every time they came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, complaining, and he says, no, I can't live with her, she's not respecting me, and so on, he, and I want to divorce her. It is mentioned in the Quran, he would say to him, no, keep your marriage, keep your wife, fear Allah, do, uh, do not, and that's his repeated advice. God had made it, had, had informed the Prophet Muhammad by revelation that this marriage will not continue. No matter what you do in trying to reconcile between this couple, this marriage will end up in divorce. And God wanted to teach people that your adopted son is not like your natural biological son. He's not really your son, he's just your adopted son. That's in the Islamic law. And that, because a wife, or a divorced, uh, the divorcee of your son, of your biological son, she's permanently prohibited in Islam for you to marry. If your son married a woman and divorced her, a Muslim man cannot at any time propose to that, to that woman. It's forbidden. There's a dis but if he's adopted, he's not your biological son. In Islamic law, it is permissible. It is permissible for, for if one day happens that you propose to this woman, you can. 
So God wanted to show this teaching to the people, but the prophet felt so embarrassed about this possible situation that may happen. Because still the Arabs at the time had this understanding that your adopted son is like your biological son. And nobody has done this before. So every time he came to him, he says, oh, there's a problem. Prophet would get more and more anxious and worried that this time is coming where he will divorce her and then the commandment will come Zawajnaka means Allah commanded him at one point in the future it will happen in the future that he will he will marry her so he was trying to delay this as much as he could no keep your wife fear Allah keep your wife fear Allah until they finally got divorced nothing worked and then Allah told him and commanded him to marry her and criticized him for those feelings that he was having how can you how can you feel ashamed of something that your creator is the one who's commanding you to do as a teaching for everybody in the community and he said to him you would hide within yourself something that God was sure to reveal and bring to light one day that this event will happen. I told you it will happen. I've revealed it to you. And you're trying to hide it. You're trying to delay it. You're trying to prevent it from happening. It will happen. Look at this. You see, fearing, you fear what the people were, would say, whereas it is God alone whom you should fear. Why would you fear the sayings of people while God is more worthy to be, to be feared? So him as a prophet criticizing himself in such a way because the, the verses actually tell him that you are fearing the people which is something in Islam that a person, a Muslim should not have this kind of feeling we should fear our creator he is the one who created those people but the verses are saying that you are fearing the people while you should only fear your creator it's admonishing him and, uh, and, 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 and he was put in this situation which he was totally disinclined to fall into one day and he was trying his hardest to avoid it and prevent it uh, we will continue we will conclude our, our talk at this